Welcome again to Inquiring Minds. I guess you notice my uh, scenery is a little different here, but today I have a very special guest with us, one I've been thinking about for a while. This is a topic that, that touches my heart, and I want our younger people, as well as our older people, to realize where this country has been. Uh, history is, is something that we can't change, although the textbooks are trying to change it, but history is, is a fascinating subject. Our younger people particularly need to know about the history and why they have the freedom to do what they, uh, what they do today. The freedom of speech, freedom of press, uh, freedom of religion, and right to bear arms and things like that. That was fought for. It was not something just given to you. It was fought with blood and tears and bullets. And I have with me today Mr. Lupe Montavo, who is a retired Marine. Welcome, Mr. Montavo. And first of all, let me shake your hand and say thank you so very much for your service to our country. Thank you. It's been my pleasure to meet you. Uh, would you tell us something about your time? Now, Mr. Uh, Montavo retired from the Marines. When did you join the Marines? What year? I joined in October 1947. And then uh, I enlisted. I, at 47, I joined Reserve Unit in Little Rock, Charlie Company, 15th Infantry Battalion. And then after I graduated from high school, uh, the Korean War started and the reserve unit got called up to active duty. And so there I went to I went to uh, Korea and served in a, as an infantry uh, group leader. And you were in combat then, you weren't stateside all that no, time. No, we went. We oh, went right okay. to Korea. Went right to Korea. Uh -huh. uh, if if you don't mind, uh, I don't want to drag up bad memories or anything, but would you tell our viewers just a little bit about what that was like? Well, uh, we got there in, in the summertime, so it, it was hot, and I had never been to, to a foreign country, so this was all new to me. And we landed at Wonsan, and then operated around in that area, uh, and then Come winter time, uh, around the 10th of November, the snow started falling, and we were in North Korea, and and we had to we had to walk in the snow up to our snow got deep up as high as our knees, and uh, we 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 fought it fought the Chinese in, in the snow, and we had to. Uh, they were, they were more Chinese than uh, it was of us, and so we had to, we had to. I don't want to say we didn't retreat, but we pulled back, back away from North Korea, and came down south, and then um, we stayed, we stayed in combat all the time, and so we lived, we lived in a hole in the ground in the winter time. Wait a minute, in a hole in the ground? Uh huh. In the winter time? Yeah. And you went over in summertime. Did you take winter clothes with you? No, all we had was a utility summer clothes. And a summer clothes, and you're living in a hole in the ground? Uh huh. In December, I mean in November, and there's 10 inches of snow on the ground? Yeah. And there's a bunch of us got frozen feet. I got frozen feet. And of course, we didn't. We didn't pay attention to it. We, we just had to do it. Had to be there. But uh, after I came back to a reserve unit, to a reserve area where we could rest for a little while, uh, we had we had our medical people treat our feet. And some of them, some some of the fellows' toes were just just black. So they had. They were evacuated out of the combat. Uh, I have seen a, a show on the military channel 
about the frozen chosen? Uh huh. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, that was the, we were up at the, the reservoir, the chosen reservoir. That was uh, as far north as we got. And then that's when the Chinese came in. And uh, before that, it was just North Koreans. But then when the Chinese came, they was, it made a big difference. I'm sure it did. Yeah. I'm sure it did. If uh, uh, When did you retire from the Marines? I, I retired in 30 April 1972. I, 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 I got. I came back from Korea and and uh, and got out, but I stayed in the reserve unit. Mm -hmm. And I went to University of Notre Dame while I was out. And then I worked in civilian life, but I, I kind of got bored with that, so I went back in the Marine Corps. And, that's, and I, when I did that, I decided I I would stay in the Marines, make a career of it. You were born to be a Marine. Well, ever yes. since I was 11 years old, I wanted to be one. I can remember my brother was as, as far back as I can remember, and he's just a couple of years older than I am, but that boy always sang the Marine hymn, and I don't know where he learned it from, but he would sing the Marine hymn all his life, he sang that. So when he graduated from high school, of course, he joined the Marines. Well, that was it. I don't know where I first heard it, but it was, I was in, in grammar school, and, and we we learned the Marine Corps hymn, and we always, as a week, the boys, mm -hmm. we always sang the Marine Corps hymn. I understand that. So if you were uh, uh, in the Marines during the later 60s and early 70s, did you uh, go to Vietnam? Yes, I did three tours in Vietnam. Three tours? Mm -hmm. I went in 60, 1966. Well, we left San Diego in 65, and we did. We stayed at Okinawa to get oriented to the temperature, uh, and and then we went down south. We call it down south. We went to Vietnam mm -hmm. and operated out. Of, uh, we landed at Chu Lai, which is south of Da Nang, and then. And then uh, uh, we moved up to Way, and we we fought in Way, the city of Way, and then and then our unit moved all the way up to Dong Ha, which is up north northern part of Vietnam, um, and uh, we we did operations and around there, and I got. I got Ella lifted out of out of Dong Ha. Okay, you did operations there. What do you mean by operations? Well, we had we had combat. Um, we we fought we fought the Vietnamese at at those places, and that's why we call them operations, because the whole unit our old unit went went into. An attack phase, and uh, we always, when you always there, then you always had had combat with with the VC, the Viet Cong. Uh, tell me, if you don't mind, what was the worst part of being a Marine? The worst part? Yes. Oh. Probably going through boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> I expected you to say being in battle in Vietnam or, or North or, or Korea or something, but being in boot camp. What was so bad about boot camp? Well, it was. Uh, you, first of all, you're coming from civilian world, and then you're thrown into this military organization where drill instructors are breaking you down from civilian attitude and teaching you military military training and discipline. And that's that's uh, the way they do it is they're real stern and everything is, is regimented. And, and so that's a completely whole 
and way of life. And uh, they don't, they didn't mess around with you. you. They were pretty stern. It wasn't a Gomer Pyle USMC thing, was no, it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> no. You know, I see these movies on TV about about these war stories, and I tell Olga that that that's not that, that's that's Hollywood talking. <laughs> that's Hollywood. That's not the real version. No. Uh -uh. Uh, what kind of medals did you earn when you were in uh, during your whole career? Oh, I have. Uh, of course, you have the United Nations medal, the Korean Service medal, uh, the Good Conduct medal, the Vietnam Service medal, uh, Navy Unit Commendation, uh, uh, Vietnam. There's a couple other Vietnam medals. Uh, Your shooting ability. Oh well, yeah. That was that was every Marine has to qualify with the, with the rifle, mm -hmm. and and as you become you become staff NCO, then you you also have to qualify with the pistol. Because, you have purple heart because because you're you're uh, armed with the pistol. Mm -hmm. Other than that. Did you receive a Purple Heart? Yes, I did. Do you want to tell us about that? Well, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. He said, I got, I got shot in the, in the arm, and then in Vietnam, I, I stepped on a bungee stake. The Vietnamese had, had bungee stakes that they had stuck in the ground, mm -hmm. and then they'd cover them up. When you stepped in that hole, and the, the bungee stick would, would hit, hit you, and they had it fixed with it. When you stepped in them, they hit you from the side, oh. so they would catch you above the, above the shoe tops. They were pretty smart. They had uh, they had all kinds of different different kinds of booby traps. Things they didn't train you about in boot camp. No, uh, you didn't know about them. There was a, a lot uh, that you did not learn in boot camp. No. I'm sure that it was a rough time being away from your family and uh, fighting, not knowing whether you're going to survive that battle or not. Uh, now, in Korea, when I was a squad leader, I, I was telling you about we heard mortars going off. And we just kind of laughed and said, "Oh, somebody's getting incoming." And then I turned, I turned to walk, just took a couple of steps away from my my friend that I was talking with, and the mortars hit hit in the trench where he where we were, and it and it took both of his legs off. And that was that was one of my members of my squad, and uh, so we had to. I took my, my belt off and cinched up his leg, and took took my took my shirt off. It wasn't a shirt, but it's my jacket, mm -hmm. and put it over and tightened it up to stop the bleeding. And I thought that he would die, but but he didn't. He he lived. He he was only 19 years old. Oh goodness. Well, I was you know I was only 20. I'm sure that you lost friends in battle. Well, yes, I did. And uh, that was kind of a kind of a hard thing to take. I'm sure that it would be. And when when I came out of out of uh, Vietnam the first the first time, uh, that was. Uh, I was the only, besides the pilot, the helicopter pilot, and his co-pilot. I was the only live, live person on the on the helicopter because it was they were taking 
they taken the dead bodies away, and I, and I, I, they had tags on them, so I checked some of the tags to see if it was any of our people. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the way it goes, and you just you just do it. You just do it. That has to be a, a hard thing to face. Did you ever sur uh, uh, have survivor's guilt? Did you experience that? Oh, for a long time, I I had uh, well, I couldn't sleep at nights, mm -hmm. and I I would I would still uh, seem like the enemy was 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 crawling crawling towards me even I knew I was at home in bed but it seemed like that they were they were crawling on the floor and I would I would jump out of bed and, and, and hit the floor with my fist thinking that you were still fighting yeah, with uh -huh. flashbacks and uh, and I couldn't I couldn't listen to any any loud noises I mean, like, like, uh, like a, a bang or, or that sound, because that's that's the sound that the bullet sound make when they're when they're going past you. Wow. And one time I was I was standing out in the yard and and the train was parked by, and you know how the wheels they go. And all I heard was shh. And without thinking, I just fell on the ground. I, I didn't do it, just just my instinct took me to the mm -hmm. ground. And because it sounded like a bullet going by your ear? It sounded like, or like, um. like a, a shell. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not so much a bullet, but it's artillery okay. round. Artillery rounds. Mm -hmm. Or mortars, because when, they, when they're coming down, they make a shushing sound. And uh, just before they explode, and that's a sound you will never forget. Mm -mm. Never. You just and it and it used to bother me, but it don't do it anymore. But that has been a while. Yeah. Time helps. That's a question, not a statement. Well, it uh, it used to bother me until I went I went to the VA, and that's only been oh a couple of years. A couple of years ago, and then I went through their through their program. PTSD. Yeah, and and that helped me. So I don't, I don't, I don't have that anymore. Uh, now, would you tell us what what that program was for? Uh, that was for post traumatic stress disorder. PTSD. Mm-hmm. I, I, I heard what your wife said, but I wanted to be sure that our viewers heard that. Because there's probably uh, veterans out there in our audience now, uh, that uh, are suffering with that now, that don't know there is help at the VA. And it's it's there for them. Well, I didn't even know I had post-traumatic stress. I just knew these things happened to mm -hmm. me. And uh, I didn't know what to do about it. I understand that, and, and I didn't think to say it when we first started our conversation, but if I ask a question that you'd rather not answer because of the way you feel or something, please just say, oh, let's move on, and they won't offend me or anything, because I don't want to bring up anything uh, in your memory that's going to cause you any problems. But I, I, I feel like it's important for our, our viewers to know what happened uh, during war, what happened to our servicemen and women, what they went through so that we can enjoy the freedoms. And I realize a lot of our freedoms are being taken away from us, but we still have a lot of freedoms that you and the other uh, military people fought for. Uh, I did ask you what was the worst thing about the Marines. What do you think, uh, in your opinion, is uh, was the best thing about spending your career in the Marines? Uh, the, uh, the best thing for me was was traveling and seeing foreign countries. Uh, he, oh, Vietnam was a pretty country, 
if if it wasn't that you know that they, we were there in combat, I, I really would have enjoyed being there. Uh, you were talking about the snow and, and when you were in the Korean War. Was there any snow or anything like that in Vietnam? How what no. was the weather like no. there? Oh, in Vietnam yeah. it was it was you wet and uh, hot. Wet and hot. Uh -huh. That sounds like Arkansas in the summertime, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, it was but, it, right. And it, when it wasn't raining, it was really hot, and it rained a lot. Did they have like uh, rainy seasons and dry seasons yeah, over there? Rainy the, season and we dry have season. the four seasons: summer, winter, fall, and spring. And and uh, over there they have. They have we, all season. we had was the two seasons, wet and yeah. Wet and dry. <laughs> wet and dry, that's right. I understand that. Uh, I want to ask this question. If you don't want to answer, that's fine. Knowing now, uh, having been through uh, two wars and all that you've been through, would you do it again? Yes. I, I would do it again, but I, I, would, I wouldn't wish this on, on anybody else. I, I wouldn't want anybody else to have to go through what I did. I understand that. I mean, I, I'm not saying I understand how you I'm, feel, I mean, but like, I understand like what you say. Like young people, mm -hmm. the young fellas growing up, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that they'd have to go through what we did. I once heard it said that uh, parents say that if there's going to be a war, let it be in my time rather than my child's time. Yeah, that's that's about right. We did it, but I, I wouldn't want, I don't have any boys. I didn't raise no boys. Um, I wouldn't want them to, to have to go through what I did. I understand that. Uh, I thank you so very much for sharing with us, and I could sit here all day and listen to you talk about that. It's, uh, not that I enjoy war and things about it, but it, like I said, it's it's history, and it needs to be kept alive. And I do like to hear about the things uh, that the soldiers, the Marines, that that our military people have gone through, because it makes me appreciate my freedom more. And I enjoy when I go to Walmart or wherever I go, if I see someone that's wearing a cap or a shirt or, or maybe a bumper sticker on their car or something that makes me think that they're a vet, I'll ask them. And if they say yes, I'll shake their hand and, hand and say thank you. Because I think that everyone should do that. Uh, and, and that's nowhere near what you deserve. Uh, it, it's, it's just such a, a, an awesome thing for me to see people who have been through war. Uh, are, are, and I realize that every veteran did not uh, participate in combat, but even they were in the service serving for us, for our freedom, because there was jobs that had to be done here at home and in other places. But I do thank you uh, for being our, my guest today. Is there one last thing that you would like to say to our viewers? Well, I want to, I just, I would like to say thank you for appreciating what our, we military persons went through and I, from my feelings are that I, I would do it again so somebody, somebody, some of the younger folks wouldn't have to do it. And it, and it wasn't it wasn't all that bad. I, looking looking back at after, of course I can say that because I came back. A lot of my friends didn't come back. That, that's the worst part about it. Was you you lost. And let's face it. Like members of my squad, those were some of the best men that I ever served with, that I ever met, and that I ever knew. And there's, I don't know where some of them got evacuated, wounded and evacuated, and I never saw them again. But I'd like to, and I'd like to know how they are. And Kenny was the only one that I kept up with. Mm -hmm. and. 
Kitty was the one that lost both of his legs. Uh, He's passed away now. Yeah. Uh, well, again, I want to say thank you so very much uh, for, for serving for me and for our viewers, for allowing us into your home to visit with you. And you uh, showed this to me that was in your scrapbook. And to close out the program today, I want to read this. It says, a Marine died today of a war that he had fought in and the deeds that he had done. In his exploits with his buddies, they were heroes, every one. And though sometimes to his neighbors his tales became a joke, all his buddies listened, for they knew whereof he spoke. But we'll hear his tales no longer, for old Bob has passed away, and the world's a little poorer, for a Marine died today. He won't be mourned by many, just his children and his wife, for he lived an ordinary, very quiet sort of life. He held a job and raised a family quietly going on his own, and the world wouldn't note his passing, though a Marine died today. When politicians leave this earth, their bodies lie in state, while thousands note their passing and proclaim that they were great. Papers tell of their life stories from the time that they were young, but the passing of a Marine goes unnoticed and unsung. Is the greatest contribution to the welfare of our land some jerk who breaks his promise and cons his fellow man, or the ordinary fellow who in times of war and strife goes off to serve his country and offers up his life. The politician's stipend and the style in which he lives are sometimes disproportionate to the service he gives, while the ordinary soldier who offered up all his is paid off with a medal and perhaps a pension small. It's so easy to forget them, for it is so long ago that our Bobs and Jims and Johnnies went to battle, but we know. It was not the politicians with their com compromise and ploys who won for us the freedom that our country now enjoys. Should you find yourself in danger with your enemy at hand, would you really want some cop out with his ever waffling stand? Or would you want a Marine who has sworn to defend his home, his kin, and country, and would fight until the end. He was just a common Marine, and his ranks are growing thin, but his presence would remind us we may n need his like again. For when countries are in conflict, then we find the Marine's part is to clean up all the troubles that the politicians start. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Perhaps just a simple headline in the papers that might say, our country is in mourning 